the ultimate beginner's guide to elk hunting. I wanted to introduce a new ongoing series we started right now. This is Clem Shady. Uh, this is the guy who's helping us out with the channel. He also has his own channel. We'll link it in the video description. Clem has never elk hunted. You're a virgin. Pretty much. And guys, there's a lot of you out there who watch our stuff and maybe some of it goes over your head or you're intimidated or there's just that learning curve of elk hunting, which we are here to help you. All you OGs, all you gangsters out there that have been doing it for a while, you know the fundamentals never go out of style. So there should be some good things to maybe revisit for all of us. And it's gonna be cool because he's a blank canvas. We're gonna get Clem to get his first elk in 2023. And we're gonna take you guys along his journey on this ongoing series, come along. All right, Clem, a lot of people think they got to buy the most expensive bow in the world, right? Yeah. And I could probably hook you up with a Matthews. Like, 100%. there's no doubt that I <laughs> yeah. might do that. Yeah. But let's see what you're working with. Show me what you got. Okay, guys, so what I got here is I went down, it was a holiday sale. So, you know, we had actually a really good price on this bow. I believe this was right around $500, but it went down to a $300 blowout sale. Um, what I got here in this package is your blackout XS bow, and I managed to get a true fire release. Came with a couple of things, which is awesome. The bow totally comes ready to shoot. So that's what I liked so about all it. all your components came with it. It's like a package deal. Absolutely. So you walked out of the door with all this for how much? I walked out of the door for the bow and the case and accessories for less than $460. Awesome. All right, yeah. let's check it out. Got a nice case. The case comes with it too? No, I had to buy this separately. Okay. Yeah, this case was only 25 bucks on sale. Here is the blackout bow right here. Absolutely love it. It's a 70 pound draw weight. I'm a 29 and a quarter draw length. You got a long draw length, man. I do. <laughs> All right, let me check this thing out. So, yeah. um, yes, I can touch other bows without losing my sponsorship <laughs> from Matthews. Blackout, so is this made by Trophy Ridge? I think that's the company is Blackout, I believe. Oh, they will tell you. Oh, okay. The people on the channel, they will know. Okay, so odd system right here that you can kind of undo some screws. And so basically you could get this bow to somebody else pretty easily. Gotcha. If I do upgrade you, which I probably would, just because I, I like you, yeah. I would always tell you to keep this. 100%. Never sell, always have two in case gotcha. two is one when it comes to bow hunting, especially if you end up going out of state. Roger that. That D loop is scaring me. That's gonna break on you and that's gonna cause you to have a black eye. So you wanna always check your D loop. See how that little, yeah. So so that is something. But all in all, this is a great rig to start with. Let's test the poundage and the peak weight and the holding weight. Dude, Din, you just showed me that, bro. That's insane. A lot of people experience the heartache of, which is why I'm gonna load an arrow while I test this, because if this D loop broke, didn't have an arrow on it. It'll break the bow. I mean, dry firing usually breaks bows. Okay, so I'm gonna use a last chance, and this is just gonna tell me So this is at 60 pound peak weight and you're holding 18.4 pounds at full drop. Gotcha. So like if you were to pull back on an elk, the holding weight 18 pounds, that's a lot. That's I a mean, lot. that's a lot. You gotcha. might get the shakes. Like if you pulled back on that deer, like a deer or whatever. Yeah. Have you, oh, speaking of deer, guys, Clem stroked a deer his first year bow hunting and he filmed it, self filmed it. Here's a quick montage of that, go. to the truck and start taking care of the uh, field dressing. Dude, that's awesome. Maybe not the best shot in the world, no. like the deer was moving, but yeah. I mean, that's how you learn, right? 100%. That's cool, and you got the deer. Yes. Congrats, that's Thank awesome. You. All Thank right, you. looking at this bow, just from a standpoint of like, I'm not familiar with it. Some Somebody on here probably knows what it is. Um, you bought it at a box store, and there's 100%. nothing wrong with that. This, at 60 pounds, and what's your total arrow weight? 340 spine, yeah, exactly. which is how stiff is the arrow. Okay. So, and it, usually you pick your spine based on the manufacturer, like on the back of a box of arrows, they'll give you a guideline, like, hey, if you draw a length 29 at 60, 
60 pounds, scroll down, you're like, oh, you need to have 340 spine. For someone like you, I would probably have you drop down a spine to like 300. It'll be a little heavier grain per inch, but if you're only gonna shoot an elk with 60 pounds, I feel like as the poundage goes down, your total weight should probably go up. Roger For that. example, my elk hunting arrows generally weigh somewhere between 430 grains to 460 grains. And I've gone even upwards, I've killed elk with 515 grain arrows. So the lighter the poundage, I think the heavier you should go. So if you wanna stick with this at 60 pounds, I think we could build you some arrows that are gonna be a little bit heavier than this one. Probably a 300 spine, probably some good front of center weight on the front, which will really help guide those broadheads because you're not gonna always get 20 yard shot on elk. I mean, we want 20 yard shots, right? Yeah. Like absolutely. you wanna get close to elk, that's why we bow hunt them. But I think we would probably work on building you some new arrows for this setup if you wanted to stick with it. Looking at his sight, he's got a three pin. He's got a nice configuration. What are the yardages, 20, 30, 40? 20, 40, 60 actually. Holy smokes, there you go. So yeah. that's a pretty big gap. And I am surprised that you're getting, I mean, for how close those are together, I'm surprised that you're getting 20, 40, 60. I'll have to see that on paper. That's what the guy at the shop told me. So. Really? Yeah. <laughs> okay. But ideally for elk, I mean, I don't like to pin gap, like say an elk's at 30 yards. So you're going to gap your 20 that, and yeah. 40. Seems um, so what I usually set up for elk and everyone's a little different is 20, 30, 40 is what works well for me. I've seen guys go 25, 35, 45. They do make sites nowadays that can have fixed pins and then you can get a sight tape. Oh, okay. So like you could use your bottom pin as your floating pin. They call it a floater. Say that was 20, 30, 40 and an elk walks out to 50. Instead of guessing and holding high, you could slide your bottom pin or top pin, whichever one's your set floater, mm. down to the exact yardage and shoot. So I do like dialing for exact yardages, especially like 60 plus. Yeah. If you don't like that, then I would say just add more pins. Get a site that has maybe five or six okay. pins. Okay. Um, yeah, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Gotcha. And then you could slide something like that. Now you're rocking a whisker biscuit. It's tried and true. There's no shame in your <laughs> game. It is proven. It does work. Is it something that I would put on mine? No, but I mean, we're talking 20 plus years of elk hunting, zero years of elk hunting. Yes. This will work. Awesome. No shame in your game whatsoever. Right on. You got a stabilizer in the front. You have no options really for a back bar. Go ahead and put your quiver on. Let me see how that works. So that's just going to snap right in the top here. Clip down, pops in, boom, that easy. And then it's ready to go. And I like how okay. compact this is for tree stand hunting, ground blind hunting. I mean, axle to axle, that's pretty small. Yeah, it's tiny. I think it's pretty good. We should definitely shoot an arrow through chrono and see what your feet per second is. So 231 feet a second. That's plenty of speed to kill an elk. If he gets an arrow built up like 480 to 500 and shoots an elk with 60 pound bow, that's plenty with a sharp cut on contact two blade with bleeders or even a sharp three blade like a micro Hades three blade, you're gonna kill an elk. Gotcha. Okay. Right on. Absolutely no question. Right so on. did you pass through the deer you shot? Yes. So you got plenty of <clears throat> momentum, kinetic energy, all the stuff that the physics behind all that stuff. This is great. This is a good setup. And there's people out there relating to you like, hey man, I'm on a budget. This is good enough, guys. 100%. It ain't the bow. It's the hunter. It's yes. the archer. How well you know your equipment. Absolutely. And how it's performing. And then, then we have to work on your intimate knowledge of elk biology and behavior. And I mean, I hate to tell you this, but you're living in a state where it is very difficult to kill elk on public land. Gotcha. I don't spend hardly any time in our home state. Gotcha. And I think that might change just because I'm going to probably have to take you out. <laughs> yeah. So I got Sounds a couple good. spots right in our state. We'll see if we can get her done this fall. Awesome. All right, now strings. Are these custom strings? No, this came with the Factory package. strings? Yes. Okay, so what I would do is continue to shoot these in and maybe order a set of backup strings. Okay. I would invest in backup strings. That way if you nick or if you lose some serving and you're on a hunt, yeah. you can throw in new strings. You don't have a backup bow, yeah. so this is what you have to do gotcha. in that instant. This is just like Murphy's Law for a bow hunter is like everything that can go wrong will go wrong and you try to mitigate that. Gotcha. Um, all right, well, let's go watch Clem shoot and look at his basic form and technique and see where he's at. All right, guys, I watched him shoot, what, two, three arrows? Yes. Okay. You know, the fundamentals never go out of style when it comes to this bow. And guys, you probably, some of you can tell that draw length ain't proper, right? Like you can just tell like you're pretty hunched over. You're, you're having to dip your head in there. Wouldn't it be cool to shoot a bow where like you're here and you have, you have a T and then you're right here 
and you're just stacked yes. bone on bone where there's no like flexion or tension in the muscle because there's already tension in muscles with a bow, which yeah. I think makes a bow harder to shoot than a gun because a gun, you squeeze the trigger, it's over. There's no real tension. Where here, all that energy is stored in your body and in the cams. I'm dumbing it down to it's got to be repeatable. So like there's no real true exact way to shoot a bow, but there are some fundamentals that don't go to style. Gotcha. And so for me, and I'm not an archery coat, okay? I just pretend to be one on YouTube, right? No. He's only been hunting for 20 years. Oh, well, still, you can do things wrong. It's something ain't right with your draw length 100%. and dipping your head. Yeah. It doesn't look very comfortable or fun to shoot. Okay. Where you're having to go hunt for your, and then you're not in this stacked, repeatable position. Yes, I agree. To give the guys at home and the gals, let's pretend this is your riser. Grip is like everything. He's shooting a rig. Okay. And not torquing it and moving it. You want to be able to repeat it. So you see, you have this little line in your hand. Yeah. I'm going to the, this side of it. Every time. Every time. But do you see how this minimizes influence on the riser? Absolutely. Which holds the bow steadier. Yeah. This is going to give you more consistency. Yes, it feels Grip good is too. everything. You don't want to be real spongy and bent in this arm. Down. You want it out straight. And I need to bring the shoulder down. Ah, nice. Okay, so if you were to get your stance, it's all about your stance. Hold out a T with your arms. Bring your shoulder blades down. Stack those arms straight. Okay. And then we're going to bend at a 90 here. Okay. There's that. Guys, I got to ask you at home does he look like this when he made those other shots i mean you can see what probably i was seeing you do not look like this when no, you're shooting it didn't your bow. feel like this either but we need to figure out how to get you in a position that's repeatable before we start worrying about gear upgrades and this that the other it's like 100%. we gotta master these fundies so let's have you, and when I load a bow, you can either go like this, you can knock it like cock vein up. These are built with cock vein out. The way that's knocked, that's fine. Gotcha. I got, a lot of times guys will go here and then drop in. That's okay. one way to do it. Or the way I do it is maybe a little bit different than others, but I like to go through and then turn. Nice. Either way, Yeah, cool. you wanna be able to do that part with your subconscious, because when an elk's walking in, you wanna be able to knock up without having your broadhead nick your string. You wanna be able to look at your quarry, your elk, and be able to do whatever you do. You should not have to think without about looking that. at the bow. Gotcha. As far as shooting a bow, you need to be very conscious while you're shooting a bow. You don't wanna be subconscious while you're yeah. shooting a bow. You wanna be very conscious and present in what you're doing. From there, I'm gonna have you go ahead, try to work on getting that grip set, pulling your bow all the way back to the anchor, and I want the string to touch your nose just barely in the front, but I want your eyes closed the entire time. Here okay. we go. Again, I'm not an archery coach bro i'm trying to give you some bro science all right let's close those eyes pull that bow back all the way back that's where your anchor is Gosh, it's just i feel like it's too short like my draw length is too short it could be so and i don't even i'm not even convinced bring the string to your nose open your eyes see how your left arm's bent yeah that, yeah it does go not ahead, feel good go ahead and lower it down so I, the first thing we want to do is measure your draw length which we're going to do today Okay. I think that this draw length is too short for you. You looked very compressed and hunched in, and that's just no fun. Not at all. Now, I don't know a lot about this bow. We might have to go down and see MFJJ, which okay. is probably good practice. He's going to be involved in your journey, whether he likes it or not. Sorry, okay. Josh. We got You got to help the homeboy out. <laughs> uh, but I think we need to get the right draw length for you. The more and more I get into archery, the more I've learned that having the exact draw length to you matters so that you can repeat it. I'm talking like, for me, my draw length really is about 26.75 not no. 27 inches no and it really matters that quarter of an inch really messes with you and it also can like depend on how long your d loop is what kind of release aid you're using all this stuff so don't get intimidated guys but find some good help and get the proper draw length understand it's all from the ground up like stance is everything grit or the lack thereof is everything and then proper draw length dude your groups are going to shrink 100%. everything's going to tighten up to summarize for today's video here's what we're going to do we got a speed 230 uh we're going to weigh his arrow we're going to check his draw length he He's gonna go down to see MFJJ. We're gonna get his D loop. We're gonna have this new go down to Spokane Valley Archery. Josh carries, obviously Matthews and Hoyt. I think he carries some primes. And basically, I want you to basically narrow it down to like your top two. Okay. And then you're gonna shoot those back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And then you're gonna finally decide on which one that you like the best. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Dan made arrangements for me to come down to the Spokane Valley Archery, talk to Josh Jones. Maybe check out a couple of flagship bows. I'm really excited. We're gonna walk inside. I have no idea what's in store for me. All right, Clem, time to try out some bows. Awesome. All right. I'm excited. Got them over here. 
This is where we test fire everything at. We got a Bowtech, a Matthews, and a Hoyt, all equivalent comparables. This is a CP30, that's a VTM31, and that's a Phase 429. Those are the three closest bows to each other. They're all set at 27 and a half for you. They're all set at 70 pounds, should all be equivalent. As fair as you can be to try to determine which one feels better to you. Awesome. You ready? Yes. All right. Let's start with that. I got arrows here. So I'm just gonna have you shoot three out of each one and then switch to the next one and try to realize how they feel, pay attention to the cycle. Okay. And then we'll get through all three of them and then I'm gonna make you take one away. Okay. And then try them again. Sounds okay? good. Go ahead. Bring your hand over a little bit like that. Now bring your fingers around my hand. Now keep your hand relaxed. I'm gonna pull my hand away. Okay. That's how you hold your bow. Okay, sweet. Okay, line you up. Yeah, you're in the bill. Anywhere in there is fine. Go ahead and squeeze her off. Cool, there's your one. There you go, good. One more, and then we will switch. Not that it matters, but that is the most popular bow so far. Okay. Now we're still in April, so we still got a ways to go, but that has been the one we sold the most of. All right, so give me that. Grab a bow tech and switch to that. Same, same. Any immediate response and feedback from that? Do you feel anything that jumped out at you? It was just like the let off is amazing. Having that yeah. little weight to hold like yeah. so much different from a cheap bow. Well, yeah, in all fairness, you do have an entry level bow and there's a pretty big difference in yeah. all of them regardless who they are. Okay. Bring your nose over the string so you're lining up with the string. There you go. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah, if your eyeball is looking down the string, you should be in a straight line gotcha. when you look and point. Gotcha, gotcha. If you don't have a peep, just line your eye up with the string. You should be good on that. Roger that. One more. This one feels great too. There you go. Okay, give me that. Felt good. Oh, yeah. To be honest, everybody made a really nice bow this year, so it's kind of hard to gotcha. pick one. Yeah. So if you feel like, how am I supposed to do this? Yeah, you're being fair. It's tough. Right on. We've never. You can usually tell how how good manufacturers have done about halfway through the year when you're selling really equivalent amounts of everything. Granted, we're, you're always gonna sell more Matthews because their marketing's amazing and gotcha. more people are already looking at that and yeah. that helps. Yeah. Although I do think it is the deadest bow of the three still, gotcha. but we're way more mixed this year than we were last year. So it kind of means everybody did a really good job because people will go through the same routine but leave with different bows. Gotcha. And everybody feels something different, which is why you have to try them to determine what you like, because what feels good to me might not feel good to you, might not feel good to Clem, and might not feel good to the guy holding the camera. <laughs> All right, let's go. Right on. But to you when you don't have sights, it's difficult. One more, and then we will make you eliminate one. Okay. Bring up the Jeopardy theme music. Which one goes away, Clem? Uh, I'm gonna get rid of the Bowtech. Okay. Yeah. Uh, she gone. <laughs> oh my that? gosh. There's a. If you can't do that with it, you couldn't. You shouldn't go hunting with it. These things are tough, man. Right on. Now you shouldn't blatantly neglect them like I just did, but these things are tough. They better be able to take a tumble. And I have a I have a video that will be coming out in a month or two that's going to be like a hundred times worse than that of. What can these things really take, and whose is going to hold up the best? One more, and then we switch again. Okay. The final three, and then I'm going to make you pick. Make sure you're getting your finger behind that trigger before you pull back. Yes, sir. You're gonna punch yourself in the face. Okay. Which is not fun. I mean, it's fun for the viewers. It's fun <laughs> for me. It's fun for him. It's gonna suck for you. Okay. All right, that's your three. Decision time. So can you tell me a little bit about what you've noticed between them? Are you picking up anything that feels different? Yes. Like, tell me. So. That other bow just kind of felt, honestly, like no joke, like my blackout. Like it just feels kind of cheap, a little bit like loose when I'm shooting the bow. Mm -hmm. More vibration. Uh, more vibration. Mm -hmm. um, I like 
that bow over this one because yeah. it's a little lighter mm -hmm. and honestly it just feels so like sturdy when you're shooting it every pullback and shot was exactly the same whereas i felt like there was a difference between those are the two that I just did not like. Cool. So you like the cycle on the yeah. actual Yes, I like everything about it, honestly. Yeah. Well, they are a great bow and they're hard to beat, which is part of why they are the number one seller. Gotcha. But like I said, we're selling a lot of the other two too. So they're really close. So get down there and try them out for yourself. Don't just take this word for it or anybody else's word for it. You need to shoot them to make a better determined choice for yourself. So you're getting the bow that feels best to you, not to me, not to him, not to him, but you. Okay, guys, Clem just got back from the archery shop. How'd it go? Really well. I love Josh. He was super chill. The shop was awesome. Tons of selection of bows. We looked at three in particular. One of them was the Matthews Phase 4. One of them was a Hoyt. The third bow we checked out was a Bowtech. And I, and I shot all three, ran a couple of arrows through all three of those. He kind of had me talk about which one I want to get rid of and why. And I was shooting all three. And as I kind of started going through, I noticed a couple were heavier than the Matthews. So the Matthews was like right up front. I noticed its quality was amazing. Secondly, it when it shot, it just seemed like every time I shot the bow, it was the same shot and pull each time. Whereas it kind of changed with the other bows a little bit they just seemed a little bit less put together than that Matthews like not as tight okay you know? Dude, the Matthews just took it every time I drew back fired a shot it felt like that bow wasn't even in my hand after I released the arrow it was just so smooth that's cool yeah what's your budget my budget mm, a thousand bucks thousand for yeah. everything out the door uh yeah which okay. would probably be a lot <laughs> yeah, no 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 and that there's a lot of people in your position and it's really it's an investment okay. so both those bows are more than that gotcha gotcha and that's just for the bow yeah yeah that's not paying for accessories and honestly you got to consider like the shop's labor um what i can do mm. is i can give you my labor for free yeah um and i can give you a hand-me-down bow if you want it's not a bad hand-me-down it's last year's matthews i'd be honored it's a 29 so i'll save i'll save you 1200 bucks and wow. the labor yeah and i'll even like let you use the, some accessories we can put whatever on there um absolutely that'd be awesome you want to do that yeah you deserve Thank it. You, brother and the thing Appreciate is it. man is like i'm happy to give you a bow i gave my yeah. buddy tyler a bow i've given jake bows right on i've given tim bows i like giving people bows if i'm in a position to watch them learn archery and gotcha. learn proper so yeah and take down big game i hope man yeah, i hope I we can build it right now Sweet. you got time absolutely all right here's what we'll do and guys watching this is unscripted so like this is just me i, I didn't i thought maybe he had already bought a bow uh i didn't know your budget and there's a lot of people like you so i don't think this is like a budget video per se but we are getting Clem from rookie to hopefully killing his first elk we gotta dope you in um i've watched you shoot a bow a little bit i really want you to learn proper let's build him a bow so these are Clem's mods he's got ooh switch weight 75 pounder your g so you have 85 percent let off and you chose 75 pounds big boy Wow. This is a really easy task. Don't need a press, which is so nice. And then if you want to sell your bow or maybe you want to change the pound, and this is for you, Clem, like maybe archery season, you don't feel like pulling 75 pounds while being a popsicle in a tree stand waiting for a deer. Yeah. You could always buy a set of mods that are at 60. Gotcha. And it won't gotcha. change your tune too bad. And you can have a different setup for kind of like depending on the species and the time of year. Roger that. I do that generally. A lot of times I'll just drop to a lighter one if it's like... For whitetail? Yeah. Oh, nice. Like in theory, that's a good idea. I actually gotcha. have never done that, but I've, I've always threatened to... These are 75, 85. It's a little different angle. Something like that. These have fresh Loctite on them. Gotcha. So we'll use the new screws. Right on. And Josh Jones at Podium Marcher does sell all the mods online. He's got a really good inventory. So if you're ever in a jam and you need them, you guys can buy online and we support Josh. What's up, Nick? Welcome to Washington, dude. I hope you're really enjoying the weather. Jeff. Anyways, we went down to the shop. We went down to Josh's shop. I ended up shooting three different types of bows. One was a Hoyt, one was a PSC, and the other was a Matthews. After trying all three, I kind of did the, uh, you know, take one out, 
you don't like something about it. I ended up with the Matthews. It was just stable, steady. Loved the way it released every time. Elk Shape happened to hook me up with the Matthews. A really nice bow. His old bow, one that's taken many lives of animals. So uh, this is the masterpiece that he gave me. He put a new D-loop on for me, nose button, put on some new 70 pound mods. We got our draw length, basically hooked it up. He got it ready for me to shoot. I wanted you to kind of go over his work and see how he did. Cool. Well, I mean, D-loop's insecure, nothing wrong there. Nose button, obviously, if he already tied it into your position, that looks good. I do see you could probably got some peep rotation here. Okay. We'll have to throw that in the draw board take a look and see what that's actually, if it is rotating, and we'll throw some twists in the mainstream to straighten that out if necessary. Um, we'll go ahead and check cam timing while we're there. Okay. Obviously, if this was a bow from last year, however many years old this has been, yeah. things move, strings move. So we'll want to double check your cam timing and we'll confirm draw length for you. Okay. Otherwise, I mean, you've got some good components on here. You know, the Epsilon from Hamski is just a solid limb-driven rest, nothing wrong there. Love to get you into an AE product there if we need to. Gotcha. And, you know, otherwise, great, great site on there. I'm a, I'm a fan. I believe that's called the Fast Eddie. Yes. Um, great option there. You've got the two pin up with ten thou young eyes, young man's site there with the ten thou pins. Um, it's a great bow. I mean, this was right always on. a solid bow. I love it. I think it's going to perform real well for you. We'll just make sure everything's perfectly in tune and that it fits you perfect. Top cam is just barely off. They're pretty much dang neutral. I'm not gonna complain about that at all. See, we are a little bit out of rotation there. Twisted, yeah. Probably just put half a twist into the main string. Okay. Um, we might put one twist into the bottom side of it and that might straighten out for us a little bit. Gotcha. It was off about 45 degrees, so I just wanna half a twist and see if that's gonna be enough. Shooting a good hole, even with that shaft. I honestly wouldn't have a problem with that. Even though the insert is sitting a tiny bit on it. Yeah. The tune's very nice. Gotcha. Ooh, straight bullet holes. Yeah. I'm honestly going to tell you you're fine. That's awesome. If we saw something funny there, you might not like that. But yeah. The shooting it, straight. It's just shooting bullets. And it's barely on the edge of the insert. Right on. And it's a fall away, so it's probably fine. Awesome. You can't deny the hole, so. Yeah. When you climb what I do, because I use my middle finger, I lay my hand on the top of the release. Here, okay. okay? Mm -hmm. um, you see a lot of guys, but the easiest thing to do is to bump the trigger. Oh, so yeah. I'm just using Tuck the concho fingers. to pull the bow back. Okay. Gotcha. All right. And then now you see how ergonomically my hand is in play. Mm -hmm. It's pointing straight forward. There's very minimal torque. Mm -hmm. Of course, you got to find your own anchor point on your face that you like. Yeah. Same bolt hole. Just a tiny bit knock low, nothing wrong with that. Straight back, good. Now, before you tuck into it, no, 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 uh. extend your fingers, around. Nope, lay that, lay, yep, there. Now lay your hand down on it. Okay. Tuck, tuck those fingers under, they're on the string. There you go, good. Now feel the trigger, Okay. just like that. Um, come up, 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 okay. Ready, yep. Now just pull, keep it moving. Good. All right. Now lay that finger on the trigger. It ain't going to go off. It's a heavy trigger. Relax. Open your eyes. Where's the peep? Where does it need to be? The peep needs to go up, up. the string a little bit. Okay. Yep. Okay. Come up a little bit. Relax that bow hand. Push. Keep pushing. Keep the fingers down. Good. Now just push, pull. Good. Dude. Now if you see a guy who's punching the trigger, you see they get the old snake finger and their hand, finger, their hand literally does this movement or that it'll go forward. Um, the other thing you see is a guy who thinks he's using back tension, but he's pulling more with his bicep or his forearm and the arm comes out this way. This is again, we touched on earlier why everybody says, why is your arm doing that way? When you're executing right, everything comes back. It comes back. And I don't care if your arm comes over the top, but you want to see, you should have a lot of force coming back. Eyes closed, lay your hand on the release. Get your hand on the release. Find the trigger, touch the trigger with your finger. Relaxed. Good. Nose button's almost high now. Open your eyes. Okay. You're pointed very good. Now, push, pull. Open your eyes. Just keep aiming and start pulling. I want you squeezing these back muscles. Much better. Mmm. Man, that was cool. You see we have this low left hair? Yeah. You're white knuckled holding the bow. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. Nice and relaxed. Fingers not pointed up. Okay. That's how you hit them. And you're, to do that, you actually put tension in the hand. Gotcha. The hand, when you push into the hand, what happens? It closes. Yeah. Okay. It, I don't care if the fingers touch the riser. My fingers touch the riser. I actually have a, a spot on the riser I have to touch. Okay. Um, so I don't hit it with a broad head. Gotcha. Let them close. Just relax. They can sit on the riser. Just no tension now. Okay. okay.
Good, now extend the fingers, close your eyes. Getting your anchor. We're still a little high on the nose button, that's all right. Good. Now aim, fingers are relaxed, good. Now just, good, a little tension out of it. Now start pulling with your back. Pushing with the front arm, pulling with the back. That was better. Okay. Same thing, eyes closed. Extend your fingers. Okay. Relax, find the trigger. Relax your fingers onto the trigger. Good. Open your eyes. Nose button's pretty good. Good. Now, good. I want to see half the tension out and start pulling. No, no. Don't really change your hand. Good. Now start pulling. Better. Dang. Why didn't I get this when I started, huh? I was in my backyard teaching myself how to do everything wrong. Dude. And that sucks when you make wrong habits. You're like a nice, clean so, slate. I'll, if you notice, I'm trying to add one piece at a time here, yes, okay? Yes, yes, So now we're, we're taking half the tension out. This is why I'm not a big fan of light triggers. People are afraid. You're, you've got the whole, oh, I'm afraid to put my finger on the trigger. Yeah. No, find the trigger. Have enough tension in it. We're going to get into it, and we're going to start to aim. And for me, maybe something that Dan talks about with Joel about, okay, here I go. Guys with the click. I take half the tension out of the trigger. I'm onto the target. Okay, I'm good. Engage half the tension out of the trigger. And for me, that would be my mental here I go because now I'm just aiming and pulling. Okay. I never stop staring at the X and I'm just pulling from gotcha. that point on. Get him too good. Give him a second here. <laughs> Boom. Okay. Yep. Get the fingers in. Eyes closed. Close your eyes. Get comfortable in the anchor. Open your eyes. Hand relaxed. Good. Take out half the tension in the trigger. Aim hard. And pull, squeeze that back. That really feel? good, man. How that right feeling? That felt perfect. I like how he's adding a step each time I'm doing this because it really with, helps with he's me. He's coached before. I right on. Yeah. Look at that hole. Beautiful. Beautiful hole. Right on, brother. Guys, this is my rookie elk hunter, huh? Woo! <laughs> He's be out shooting everybody. <laughs> Hell yeah. Aim hard. Keep pulling with your back muscles. Beginner's Guide to Elk Hunting, step one. Get yourself a bow that fits you. Get yourself a coach that can get you good habits. When I started, man, I taught myself everything wrong. I had to have a coach come in and break me down and start all over. So avoid that. That's the biggest thing for the archery learning curve. We'll get them the elk hunting knowledge and all that stuff. The best decision you made today was to go to an index and learn how to shoot. Go to an index. Is that true, sir? that release. I hate that release. At my camps, if you have that release, it's like, I can't teach you, I can't teach you how to shoot a bow. Gotcha. And learn how to shoot it proper. It can, you can shoot an index without punching the trigger. Nick literally broke it down better than I've ever seen. How do you feel, Clem? Like a new man, honestly. Yeah. After that short little lesson, guys, it was just like perfect. And there's a lot of folks out there watching that are in the same position as Clem. They're new to archery. They don't have great resources. That's where we come in for you guys. We're going to keep this series going all year long until you see him walk up on his first elk with a bow. Tap the sub. We'll catch you on the next one.